Welcome. Um, this is an updated version of a video I did previously with slightly better production values. On confidence intervals, and specifically I'm going to state and prove the Wilson formula for the 95% confidence interval. Alright, so what is a confidence interval? Well, consider a population of objects or individuals um, that have some property or attribute. This could be a physical attribute, height, whatever. Um, it could be um, an opinion, a political affiliation or something like that. Um, where the, the, each individual either has this attribute or does not. All right? Um, and let's say we want to estimate the proportion of the whole population that has this attribute. All right? Uh, depending on the population, this can be um, could be done by just asking every single individual in the population. All right, uh, but this can be really impractical if it's a pop if the population is the whole world, for example. It's it's highly impractical um, uh, just by by because of the resources required. But even uh, more than that, you can um, even if you have the resources to ask everyone, there's another problem, which is that People make mistakes. So even if you asked everyone, like people would, would, would misunderstand the form or the question or whatever. Uh, they would, might lie. Um, so there are, there are several issues uh, with actually asking the whole population. All right? So what we do instead is we take a sample. So we take a subset of the whole population and ask them instead. And how you do this, there's, um, I'm told there's a rich theory within statistics how you uh, take a good sample, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna touch on that. Um, so let's just assume that we've taken a good sample, okay? How do I use this to estimate the, 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 pro the proportion in the whole in, uh, population? Well, the easiest thing to say is, well, how many people in the sample had the population, uh, that, that the property? How many uh, were in my sample? And then I divide the two numbers by each other. And then I get a nice little proportion, and that's a great estimate for the proportion in the whole population, right? But I could have gotten unlucky. I couldn't. I could have asked everyone in the population that had that property, and now I get 100, percent and that's not going to be representative of the whole. It's unlikely, of course, but I'm just saying there's a there is some variation in and and uh, between the sample and the population, right? So, uh, let's say this is like a, like a political election, um, and, um, and let's say I get 51% in the sample. Am I going to win? I need to know this. This is, this is important to some people, at least. So I need to know what is then the chance that this is, this is enough. Do I need to do more? Do I need to do uh, less or whatever? Can I just take a break now? All right? So that's what the confidence interval does. It tells you, are you going to win? Uh, uh, with a, with, with a high probability, or do you still need to work on your thing, right? Okay, so since we have this attribute uh, that people either have or haven't, this can actually be modeled with a binomial distribution, right? So or we can say um, we can have a, uh, some kind of axis here with the probability on the y axis, and then we can say, well, um, we have our incidence rate in the sample, okay? So we got some, uh, let's say we got some R here. That's how many people in the sample set they have the uh, attribute, or we observe or whatever, right? So the binomial distribution that is the most ideal or most, uh, the best estimate at this point will be the one that has this as, as its mean or as, as the most likely uh, uh, number. All right? And we're not going to work with binomial distribution because that's kind of clunky. We're going to use the normal approximation. Again, assuming that our sample was chosen, chosen well. So we're going to have a normal distribution. Just bear with me here. Let's just say this is a normal distribution that has R as its mean. Okay? So this is a, a good estimate. Right? But like I said earlier, like we could have made a mistake in the sample. All right? so, this, um, so this is the, uh, this is the best normal distribution, but we could, in theory, move this this way or move this this way and we would still like this instance rate. Like, that would not be a problem. At, one po at what point does this become a problem? Well, this, if we move it far enough to the right, this becomes a problem 
when we have a distribution like this. You, now you see that the incidence rate is way to the left of the mean. It's actually so far to the left we don't like it anymore. Well, what is the, what is the, what is the hard limit when we don't like it anymore? Well, in this case, the hard limit is going to be the critical region. And the critical region is the area where we stop, stop accepting uh, binomial hypotheses, um, which is the, the lowest 2.5% uh, on each, each side of the mean. All right? so, so when this enters the critical region, we don't believe in that anymore. Now let's call this, let's call this x plus. So this is the, the, uh, the stochastic, uh, the, the random variable, the binomial distributed random variable, or normal the distributed random variable that uh, represents the highest probability that we accept with this incidence rate. All right? We do the same thing, we move the other way, we move this way, and then we get something that looks like this. This is pretty beautiful, I'm, I'm slightly proud here. This is actually, absolutely not 2.5%, but I think it's uh, pretty nicely symmetric. All right? And again, we can move this to the left, and then it's gonna, the incident rate is going to move into this critical region here. And we stop believing this. So this, these are the two most extreme distributions that we um, believe that this R um, belongs to. All right. The reason it's called the 95% confidence interval is because, um, because we're using the 5% the, the significance level, uh, which means that, the, that, that we're, we're throwing away the lowest 5%. We're, that's the, the, uh, the, the, the area under the critical region is the, is the, the most, um, least likely 5%. All right? That's why it's called the 95% confidence interval. All right? So, the, so the, uh, all in all, the interval, the confidence interval is then limited by two numbers, p plus and p minus, that can be calculated like this, r plus 2 divided by n plus 4 plus minus, ooh, let's hope I get this right. If I don't, I'll fix it in, at the end when I'm done with the proof. And if you know the normal confidence interval, uh, it does not look like that. It ha doesn't have this plus 2 or plus 4, and it doesn't have this plus 1 at the end. But either, uh, other than that, it's actually pretty similar. And in the, in when these values become large, it pretty much gives the same number. It has the benefit that if r is equal to 0, we still get an interval. In the normal case, we do not get an interval when r is 0 or when n r is equal to n, because then this whole square root becomes 0, and you just get the same number. So this actually gives an interval even in the two extreme cases, which I really like. Um, and it's, a better, um, it's really a better estimate for the most part, as far as I can tell. And it has a beautiful proof. I shouldn't start with that, right? That's the most important part. OK, so, um, so, uh, so let's, uh, let's try to see if we can use this to, uh, to prove this. Um, and I should say that uh, this is, again, this is the Wilson formula. Uh, the normal formula is called the Wolf formula, at least somewhere. Okay, so let's prove this. Okay, so what we know is, we know that this is a normal distribution, this is a normal distribution, and we're looking for the two values, the probabilities, that give this, all right? So I want the probability that, oh, actually, let me use my colors here. I want, you, I want to have the, the probability that x uh, plus is higher or lower than R should be 2.5 percent, right? Lower than R, okay? Okay, but how do I calculate this? Well, I calculate this as the probability of um, I can use the I can use the standard normal distribution. I can say, okay, this is phi of well, it's going to be uh, the mean uh, Oh shoot. Ah, sorry. So this 
going to be the, the phi of r minus mu divided by sigma needs to be 2.5%. This is the definition of the standard normal distribution, that the probability that the, the, our normal distribution is lower than that. And then I've shifted it by mu and sigma because it's not a standard normal distribution. Okay. All right, how do I then find the, uh, these values? Well, I take the inverse on both sides. So I take the inverse here, and I take the inverse here. All right? um, so these cancel, and I get the inverse of that. And the beautiful part here is that the, uh, the, 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 uh, in, uh, the inverse ter standard normal distribution uh, cumulative distribution function is approximately minus two. So if I, so, so, so if I move this to the here and make it a standard normal distribution, then this point is going to be minus two over here. Wonderful. Okay. We use this is something similar with the other one. Here we go. Okay. The probability that x minus is larger than r. All right, but that is the same as saying one minus that this is less than r. Okay, so the probability that this is larger than r is the same as one minus the rest. All right, and that needs to be two point five percent. That means that this is equal to ninety seven point five percent. And again, we can do this, this exact same argument here, and what we end up with, with is that um, r minus, oh, this is plus, oh, shoot. plus, plus, we end up with that r minus mu minus divided by sigma minus is equal to plus 2, or approximately plus 2. Isn't that beautiful? Almost the same number. All right. Okay. So what I do now is, what I do now is, I take these almost identical expressions that are just the, the differ by this sign here, and I square it. So I square this and this, and I drop the the subscript here, the minus here, because the only difference was the minus and and plus here. But when I square it, the difference disappears. So there's actually no difference in, the, in these two values. So I'm going to drop the subs subscript. Okay? So what I'm going to get here is I get, and I'm going to multiply this de denominator over here so I get rid of it. Okay? So I have r minus mu squared is equal to 4 sigma squared. All right? Now I can use that this is actually a binomial distribution. And what is the mean or expected value for a normal distribution? Well, it is n times p. And what is the sigma squared of a normal distribution? Well, it's simply n times p times 1 minus p. All right. I think we're done with these visuals. So let's continue up here. All right. So I'm going to expand this and isolate p basically. All right. So I get r squared minus 2 r on p plus n squared p squared. And I'm going to actually get, gather them on the same side, so I'm going to subtract the, the right-hand side to the left-hand side. And we get 4NP minus 4NP plus 4NP squared. And this whole thing is equal to zero. Wonderful. All right. So we're trying to, um, we're trying to uh, isolate P. And what you can see now is this is actually a quadratic in p at this point. Okay, so let's gather all the p squares over here. And what how do we have then? Okay, so we have a p squared here, p squared here. Um, they have an n in common. And that's it. Okay, so we have an n in common here. I hope we're not going outside. n, 
and what's left from this term is a an oh sorry an n and what's left from this term is a four <gasps> n plus four see we're getting closer to that purple thing isn't it wonderful um yes so let's do the p terms so we have uh, minus minus oh should we try a minus here so it's going to be they have a two in common they have an n in common and that's it and what's left? There's an r plus 2. Yes, isn't it wonderful? And the last term is just the plus r squared. Okay. Now the meat of the proof is, uh, is done. And now we just need to do a little bit of uh, solving a quadratic and then we're done. All right? So, um, so let's look at this discriminant. All right? So it's going to be this squared, so 4n squared r plus 2 squared minus 4 times this times that, which is n, n plus 4 r squared. Whew. All right, they have 4 in common. Let's put that on. They have an n in common, OK? So what's left here? We have n r squared plus 4 n plus 4n, really? Oh, 4 n r, sorry. And uh, minus, uh, and we put this outside, so it's going to be n r squared plus 4 n, oh sorry, 4 r squared. All right, I feel like uh, I'm making progress. Looks like it. So this will cancel with this. All right, and yeah, this is a four. No, oh, no, move that. Yeah, it's a four. It's a four. All right, we have another four, so that's a total of sixteen. N, all right, and uh, then we can um, actually do this. We can um, let's just do it in two steps. So we have the fours already out. Then we hit R squared, so it says. Um, So we take the r outside the parenthesis, and then it says n, ooh, oh, this is a minus, sorry, because there's a minus here, n minus r plus n. And if you see, if we take the n outside the parenthesis, if we put, put this squared, then this just divides by n, and this becomes a 1. Ooh, we're close. All right. So let's calculate this. b plus plus it is equal to minus b minus this thing, so that's a 2rnp, oh shoot, I'm doing the wrong thing, it's 2nr plus 2 plus minus the square root of this, well what's the square root of this? We can take this immediately outside the, outside the square root, and the square root of this is simply just 4n, and then the square root of what's left, r, n minus r, divided by n, plus 1, all right, and what we would do we divide by? We divide by 2 times a, which is n, n plus 4. And that's pretty much it. We can see that this cancels with this, which also cancels with this, and leaves a 2. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. Uh, if we just reduce a little, this a little bit further, it gives exactly that purple thing. Isn't that wonderful? We, we used polynomials, we used inverse functions, and we used the normal distribution. And, and it just packed up uh, and ended up with this really nice, beautiful result. All right, hopefully uh, the lighting is a little bit better and uh, the focus and everything. And um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.